All right, Bill, so you were the first one here. Yeah, and then what did you get there? You got a... Uh, ham sandwich. Ham sandwich. So this is what I got at Pork Plus. Look at that right there. Pork meat. I'm going to get my barbecue sauce. And I also got some ribs. <laughs> and some silverware. That's right. And then there's, there's yeah, John Laughlin. And here's what you're eating. He decided to take my advice and get a pork sandwich also. And Mei Hong, this is... Only uh, lemonade. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, Mei Hong. This is John's wife from China. So... Yep, and uh, we just found out that O'Brien's is going to change their name. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah, O'Brien's is changing their name. I'm not sure what it's going to be from now on. So they sold it? Or? I don't know. They are. They're picking it up. This is Jenny who decided to join us. They know a lot about the same Chinese city. Of course, make on infinitely more. Right. <laughs> it's not bad for a vegetarian meal there. Mm. Yeah. No. I, I already got footage of everybody before you got here. So, yeah, this is Jenny Hale, my good friend from I've known for, uh, since 1985. Hello. Yep. And uh, this is great that Tom came out for a wedding. Sorry, right, we keep in touch with each other on Facebook. And uh, we were just talking over right now about the, uh, the the senator in Utah that you were that, that's the reason you said you were ashamed of once living there. So something to do with what the senator said, but I thought it I took it a different way. So actually, Obama was my candidate. Oh, I, that's what I assumed. I thought for sure that you were so you were so happy about Obama winning. I'm that, I'm a third party girl. Yeah, I did read an email today. You said you wanted Hillary over Obama. <laughs> You're a party girl. Yeah. Yeah. Me being a Republican, I wanted Hillary to win too, so that McCain would win for sure. That was my strategy. But you know, for but it, if if a Democrat won, I definitely wanted Hillary over Obama for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Experience. I mean, yeah, experience and everything. So I wouldn't have felt so bad. If Hillary won, I got to admit. So, Bill Parker, Bill Parker is getting along pretty well with Mayon. So, yep. Anyway, this place. Uh, oh, I, I still have to call Ellis. That's right. I still forgot to call Ellis back. But I'm going to tell him. Anyway, here's my plate right here. I'm almost done with my pork sandwich, the beans, and I got way too much stuff. I'm going to have to bring some stuff home. Barack Obama always came off like plain folks. That was Clinton's strategy. Right. Oh. <clears throat> Yeah. I forget the system they used. Yeah. It had your first developer, which is a modified D19, basically speaking, with slightly lower contrast. Then your water bath for two minutes. Then your reversal bath, which is made of Pia Amino Phenol. And the reason I think that's an interesting thing is because P Amino, like as in amino acid, there's no joke. You could skin the thing if it had been sitting in a drum. Uh, for a week, it's, you get this cheesy stuff. It was growing stuff. It was growing stuff. P amino phenol. Only Kodak could invent something like that. It's like that's <coughs> all it is. It's a fogging agent. Whatever didn't develop and turned dark, it would it would make it dark. But it could tell the difference between the stuff that was already dark, so it didn't mess with it. Hey John, I remember E4 when we, my dad yeah. bought the Super 8 camera right. back in 1970. The first few rolls of film was process E4, right? And before it came, eventually turned into E6. Mm -hmm. They'd been making E3 up until 1966, 67. Uh huh. Um, uh, and the Kodachromes of that time period were the process K12s, which if you find I remember K12 between. Uh, I'm glad you remember K12. I do. Yeah. Um, we're not talking about the K12 filter that you put on. Cameras, that's yellow, but that's another story. Oh, that was, okay. That's the daylight film <laughs> you know, that I used to buy, Kodachrome, with, I put on the daylight filter. Yeah. The fun thing I would ask you is, you, you said that your first picture was in 1945 that you took? I'm sorry, what? You were, saying, you were saying you were, no, I was curious about you being active in photography in 1945. No. No, <laughs> the, I had the asked... Photograph, the, the most interesting oh, okay. photograph, <laughs> yeah. which was an original <laughs> Kodachrome yeah. Yeah. 4x5 transparency with the original notches mm -hmm. on it, because it wasn't a duplicate, at the age was the it. one you know taken of uh, Mussolini and his wife after they'd been bludgeoned to death. And uh, I held that in my hands 
for as much time as I allowed, and I had to photograph it onto Kodak 5071 duplicating film, slide duplicating film. Yes, I know exactly. I remember that film, too. Uh, uh, that also had maybe like seven different layers aside from your CMY layers, uh, contrast reduction to prevent crossover problems. Yeah. Um, as if everybody here knows what crossover is. <laughs> Here's crossover in a nutshell. You've got, say, blue shadows and yellow highlights. What's wrong with this picture? Well, you want neutral highlights and neutral shadow, but the, one, the dye, and this usually goes on the opposite parts of the color wheel, if you have a certain color cast here, you're going to get the opposite color cast on the opposite density. Mm -hmm. um, and that is a problem that can be remedied pretty well. You can get away with it a little bit through making a duplicate copy. Are you saying there's a little bit of space that, between the, the two tones? There's a little bit of space between the film, and no, that's what causes... No, okay. it's, no it's, it's not... Not spacing the layers; it's the dye reaction. Oh, okay. The the, the 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 color creation, the dye cloud creation ability is better, much better than it should be. Say in the um, it, uh, for one layer uh -huh. of, yeah. of color than another layer of color. In other words, they're all getting out of the starting gate at the same time in color ability making, you know, making the three different colors, but say, at, uh, for the, um, if you have yellow highlights, well then that means your cyan and magenta layers um, weren't uh, up to speed as far as um, producing the, uh, yes. the dyes. Um, and I'm starting to grasp the... Yeah. what you're talking about. And to, to correct that problem, um, there's two ways you can do it. It's better if you correct the problem using an inner negative. Uh -huh. That way you have a buffer zone to play with. Yeah. And um, because of the wonderful thing called masking dyes, which all color negatives have, it's that, that nice little reddish-orange cast that we all know and love since 1949, which is when they Kodak invented the concept. Uh, before that, uh, it was uh, they didn't have a masking dye, uh, and it was uh, they had terrible crossover problems when they finally printed a color print. Yeah. Uh, but the technicians at Kodak realized what the problem was almost immediately. Uh, what they did was they added up algebraically. All of the dyes that didn't um, uh, migrate, or, or all the dyes that did migrate, they're not supposed to migrate to other layers. They figured out what percentage of each dye migrated to what layers, okay. and they 